James in Bloomington, Indiana writes to me, Hey Paul, I have an early 1990s NAD receiver of 40 watts. It has a low damping number of about 65. By today's standards, that seems rather low. I recall when I bought the receiver, the owner of the store called it pudding base. (laughs) I have not heard that term before. I love it. Um, It wasn't sharp or fast, but it was plump. Ooh. Don't you like that? (laughs) I recall he and I sitting and listening to music, and it was delightful. 30 years later and a few service repairs, it still has that plump sound. My question is, how much damping is too much or too little for optimal sound in your humble opinion? Um, Well, first off, I don't think the damping factor had much to do with that plump sound. So let's discuss what damping factor is. Damping factor is the output impedance of the power amplifier. A vacuum tube power amplifier with a output transformer on it has very poor damping factor, very low, because it has fairly high impedance. Now, the net result of low impedance or high impedance of an amplifier's output is how well it can control the loudspeaker vis-a-vis the the loudspeaker controlling the amp. Because we have to remember that loudspeakers are electromotive devices. And it's a big coil of wire and a magnet and a moving object. So when you put energy into a loudspeaker and it moves the cone out, at some point that cone's going to come back. And when that cone comes back, you can look this up if you wish, it generates its own electricity going back. Because as we maybe remember, when you take a magnet and you forcibly push it near a coil of wire, or you take a coil of wire and you push it near a magnet, it generates a magnetic field. When you put an electrical signal into a coil, it generates a magnetic field and pushes it away, right? So you got this coil of wire hooked up to your cone and it's pushing towards the magnet. Well, it generates electricity and you generate electricity to push it the other way. So you have this back and forth process. Now, if the amplifier has low damping factor, then 65 is not terrible. It's going to be reacting with the loudspeaker and you're going to get a certain sound to it. And that's why tube amps, a lot of the reason why tube amps have a certain sound to them because they have very low damping factors. 65, as I said, is not too bad. I think the plump sound that you have was inherent in the amplifier itself, probably not to do with the damping factor, but we like to see 100, 150 for a damping factor. That's a real comfortable range. And too much, I don't know that there's too much. I don't know that you can have too much control. Part of the problem is how do we get that damping factor low? Well, usually by feedback. So as you know, I'm not a big advocate of feedback. I don't like a lot of global feedback. It does get us really good damping factor, but there's all kinds of other things that happen because of that. So it's, it's complicated. But I think you're okay, and I'm glad you're still enjoying your amp. All right. (laughs) Thanks. Bye.